Haha, <laughs> got it. Hello, everybody. Sag Attack is here. My attack line on this Monday. Well, I didn't make one Monday, but now it's Wednesday, March the 11th, 2015. All uh, right. Since I didn't make an attack line the last couple days, including Monday, I will now be telling you the number one movie in America from this past weekend to kick off things. And with not a lot of money, despite a lot of fanfare, it is Chappie debuting at number one with only a $15 million opening. Well, another radar movie that came out besides Chappie, a lot of radar movies been dominating the charts, but didn't make too much. Like Focus didn't make much. Two weekends ago, and then of course this past weekend, Chappie didn't make too much. And then of course on the other side of the spectrum, you have Unfinished Business, another radar coming, which I did see over the weekend. Debut, not even a top five, barely made a top ten with four mil. It is a, I hate to say it, it deserved a bomb. I saw it in the Imagine Theater. The movie was just okay. Neighbors was better. I was looking for Neighbors. I was actually watching Neighbors the other day. With my family and uh, my brother's watching it, and so was uh, my brother's girlfriend, and they love neighbors. I realized how good neighbors was. I love Dave Franco in it. I love love Dave Franco in it. So, and neighbors is getting a sequel, and it deserves a sequel. Speaking of sequels, uh, Zoolander Two is official for February twenty sixteen. <laughs> the new trend is they're waiting years for trailer like. In the old days, a sequel is like instant. More recently, they wait like almost 10 years for a sequel. Took 10 years for Anchorman 2. Took 20 years for a Papa Dama Dama sequel. And now it took 14 years for Zoolander 2. Which is set to be released on February the 12th, 2016. As of this pressing, probably everybody from the original will be in it. Including... Ben Stiller, Will Ferrell, and I think uh, Owen Wilson was in the movie. I would like to see that. I haven't seen the original, but I didn't like see that in the sequel. So as you know, more movie news, and Zoolander 2, coming soon. In 2016, it's on. Now, on with the Billboard number ones, we've been having a lot of new number one albums. Like, every week, there's like a new number one album. This week's no exception. At the only one week, Big Sean's Dog Sky Paradise got kicked off by Kevin Clarkson and her album, Piece by Piece, debuting at the top. This is her third number one album of her career. Of course, she had her first album, Thankful, come out in 2003. That was the number one album. I think if I was correct, and I am double checking this as I am speaking, that Stronger, her last album in 20, 2011, also debuted at number one as well. And it's like I said, a third number one album. So congrats to Kelly on that achievement. Actually, I am wrong. All, all I ever wanted in 2009 was number one, not stronger. So, so there you go. Number one albums for Kelly was thankful. All I ever wanted. Now, third number one album, piece by piece debuting. Congrats to her. Now, while we have a new number one album on the top 200, I keep them saying this. Longer number one than Bloodlines. Longer number one than Blank Space. Longer number one than even Shaking Up or even longer than All But That Bass. Ten weeks at number one on the Hot 100. Yes, Uptown Funk. Yeah, Mark Watson, Buddha Moss, waiting on top. And I mentioned Bloodlines, I think, if I am correct. Robert Thicke and Pharrell must pay like three million dollars or something to the family of Marvin Gaye for selling too much. Like Marvin Gaye, that got to give it up. Like sometimes you have like copy, some that copy each other. Like when I with Sam Smith and Tom Petty, when you just put Tom Petty in the songwriting's credit. But with Pharrell and Marvin well, Gaye, it was a whole lawsuit situation with the estate of Marvin Gaye's family. They sued it. They sued their asses. Now they're getting like three million dollars in damages, I think, for that. So there you go. It's a little blip right there. And I still like playing Blue Lines. It's a good song, even though it copies Marvin. But now on with the uh, other big kind of entertainment news day, news item for today, about a apparent hoax, a 
fake call for a fake shooting at Little Wayne's house that never really existed. According to several reports, an apparent hoax summoned a strong police response today to the home of rapper Little Wayne after an unknown caller reported the shooting. The call came in at 12.40 p.m. on a non-emergency line. Miami Beach police spokesman Ernesto Rodriguez said, said, he said, the caller claimed four people had been shot at the waterfront home on an exclusive Miami Beach island. The responding officers, including a heavily swatted, only heavily armed SWAT team, found no evidence of a shooting, no victims, and no gunmen. Rodriguez also said that Little Wayne wasn't even home at the time. According to a representative of Little Wayne, Chris Chambers, he said that Little Wayne was in the recording studio when this incident took place. The police spokesman once again stated that we can say for sure it was a hoax, and it's not a laughing matter. The department said in a tweet that the phony call was an example of swatting, in which people call in a false crime report to police in order to trigger a massive response. It's kind of what is happening in Little Wayne there. He wasn't even home. So, like I said, they don't know who made the call. Let's see if that call gets reprimanded for making a fake emergency call for a fake shooting at Little Wayne's house. Apparently a hoax. So there you go. Now let's get on with some touring news about a band who's womanly touring North America and could announce those tour dates any minute now. And a woman who had to postpone her tour. So let's get on with the band who is womanly going to go on tour this summer to North America. It could announce very shortly. Maybe as I'm making this video, <laughs> the Rolling Stones, yes. The Stones have been touring for the last two years, honoring their 50th anniversary. In 2013, they hit North America and some festivals. Last year was mostly England, Europe, and Australia, and Japan. Earlier this year, Ronnie Wood said to reporters at an airport that he and the Stones had a meeting to discuss a possible North American summer tour. Now, according to several reports, the Stones all set to tour America this summer, and it will be announced very shortly of hearing it's coming later on this week, or maybe next week. The rumors are flying about the tour honoring an anniversary of sorts for Stinky Fingers, but before that album in its entirety. I don't think the Stones have ever done that. I know a lot of bands have been doing that lately, performing albums from front to back, but to see the Stones do that? Man, that's awesome, especially for Stinky Fingers. Big album coming up from 71 with good songs like Can You Hear Me Knocking, Bitch, and of course, Brown Sugar and Wild Horses. According to the speculated reports, and this is all speculation about where they're going to play, the 14th City Tour is rumoredly going to kick off on May 24th in San Diego. It will also lead to a stop at the Hollywood Bowl in LA. And once again, reportedly, the rest of the tour will include stops in Milwaukee. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway, Red Rocks in Colorado. Wow, no stadiums. I'm hearing Minnesota Stadium, but that's all speculation, like I said. Also speculate in Buffalo, Pittsburgh, and somewhere in New York, not Manhattan. There will be Canadian cities on the tour, reportedly, and it could include a festival. And going from 2015, and they play mostly arenas. On the last U.S. tour, now playing a mix of stadiums and amphitheaters. Hopefully Detroit is one of those cities. They skipped Detroit in 2013. I hope they don't skip us this time. And if they do skip Detroit, I'm fucking going to see the Stones. No matter how much it costs, no matter if they're 150 for cheap seats like the last tour, I'm going out of state if I have to. But not in Toronto. I'm already going to see you two in Toronto like Buffalo or Pittsburgh. I'm seeing the Stones this year no matter how much and how far I have to go. Cause I want my dee -dee -dee satisfaction. So there you go. Rolling Stones rumoredly going on tour. Of course, Stones have done nothing much since their Australian tour this past winter that had been postponed from last March following the death, the suicide death, should I say, of Mick Jagger's girlfriend, Lorraine Scott. And speaking of Australia, an Australian woman, of course, Iggy Azalea, had to postpone her tour. The Great Escape Tour was set to kick off in April, but due to various reports of production issues, according to a statement, Iggy would have to postpone the tour until September. The tour would now kick off on 
September 18th in San Diego. All the dates have been postponed except Vegas, Baltimore, and I forgot the other, I think Sacramento. Three days that did not get rescheduled. Sacramento, Vegas, and Baltimore not rescheduled. So the joint show, which was set for May, will now be October the 3rd. And because of this newly rescheduled tour, the scheduled openers, Tanisha and Nick Jonas, will no longer be opening for her. She will have new openers. But to make up for not touring with her, Tanisha and Nick, and J Nick Jonas both announced today they're both planning tours to compensate for not touring with Iggy as originally scheduled. It's kind of weird that Iggy and Nick are going to perform at the Nick Elodian Kids Choice Awards in a couple of weeks, which would have been huge promotion for that tour. But then, like I said, Nick Jonas is scheduled to go on his own tour in the spring, and Tanisha going on spring going on a summer tour to compensate not touring with Iggy Azalea on the newly rescheduled Great Escape Tour. So there you go. Let's see what happens by October because she won't be as popular as then. By then, because we have another hit by then. So there you go. There's the reports about going off social media. She's been known for her headlines off the mic than on it. So there you go. But that's uh, the tour postponement. Now, got some award show news and performance. Over this past Monday, the iHeart Music Awards announced the host and performers for the March 29th event, or as I call it, WrestleMania Sunday. Uh, Jamie Foxx will be hosting it and performing on the three-hour special. A lot of people. Rihanna, Iggy Azalea, even though she's not touring. It's kind of weird that she's not doing a tour yet. She's doing all these award show appearances. As originally scheduled before the tour was supposed to start. Sam Smith, holy recovers from Larry Johnny's by then. Madonna, Megan Trainer, Kelly Clarkson, Jimmy Fox himself, Jason DeRulo, Nate Roos from Fun, Alesso, Florida Georgia Line, Jason Aldean, Jennifer Hudson, Snoop Dogg are expected to perform as well. Taylor Swift is going to appear, but not perform. Of course, this is the second annual iHeart Music Awards, which got in 5.5 million viewers. It was known for Ariana Grande's performance getting nasty looks from Luke Bryan and Blake Shelton. One of the many internet memes that night. Of course, Iggy and Sam Smith lead the pack of nominations for the award show taking place on March the 29th on NBC. Now, keeping up with more award show news, Jason Aldean and Flora Georgia Line will not just be performing at the iHeart Music Awards, they're also going to perform at the ACM Awards in Dallas this year, only its 50th year, set to take place on April 19th. Besides Aldean and Flora Georgia Line, all of the Entertainer of the Year nominees are performing, including Miranda Lambert, Kenny Chesney, Frank Shelton, and performing for the first time solo ACMs in years, Goth Brooks will be performing, along with Dux Bentley, Luke Bryan, I mentioned, Eric Church, Weba, Keith Urban, and George Strait, along with the best New Orleans nominees, Sam Smith, Thomas Pratt, and Cole Swindell. So there you go with that. Performance set for iHeart Music Awards and ACM Awards. Now, let's end this off with some more rapper news. Besides Lil Wayne, now, about Kendrick Lamar has had quite the ride in the last two years since the release of his critically acclaimed first album, Good Kid, Mad City, which many people's eyes got wild in the Grammys last year to Macklemore for all the rap categories. He kind of got rid vindication by winning the rap Grammys this year for Best Rap Song and Best Rap Performance for I. And it's a good week to be Kendrick Lamar. He's on the cover of the Rolling Stone this week. Interesting cover shot. And announced full details of his anticipated follow-up to Good Kid Man City. Last week he announced the release date for the album set for March 24th after a pre-order page was posted on iTunes. Now the name of the album and the artwork has been revealed for the album to be titled To Pimp a Mocking a Butterfly. Yeah, To Pimp a Butterfly. To kind of, uh, it's a play out of To Kill a Mockingbird. And apparently there is a artwork in front of the White House, like a little photo, but 
of Clever Moore coming up with his artwork, so it's kind of interesting to show him and his gang of his entourage, should I say. Very interesting shot in front of the White House. Kind of like a weird shot, but hey, I don't think that's the real cover yet, but it could be the cover. So, there you go with that. And then Lamar celebrates being on the cover of the Rolling Stone by announcing full details of his new album, The Paper Butterfly, to be coming out in just a scant few weeks on March the 24th. That's when I am. Hearing that the album's coming out actually March 23rd. Well, March 24th is Tuesday, but now I think they want it on Fridays now. But it's coming out on Monday, March 23rd. So there you go. That is it for the attack line for today. Thank you very much for watching. Then mind y'all, but attack by the news from Zach. See you later. Yeah.